There's a lot to doubt in today's world, a lot of things we don't know for sure. Sometimes it feels like there's a whole world beneath our own that exists in secret where the answers to some of our most critical questions lie. And nothing really gets our brains turning like a good old-fashioned conspiracy. A lot of people tend to dismiss conspiracies as if they're inherently false, but there's nothing about the definition of the word conspiracy that actually says that. But one thing is for sure, a good conspiracy is always shady. And among the shadiest industries in the world, few are shadier than the entertainment industry. From movies to music, it seems that the most rich and powerful people pulling the strings will stop at nothing to become more rich and more powerful. And perhaps even <laughs> itself isn't going to be allowed to stand in the way. I'm Rob Gavigan, and I'm here to bring you down the rabbit hole of secrecy and wonder. And after this video, you'll likely see the world just a little bit differently. If you take away something, anything, I'd love if you'd hit the subscribe button below and join our dark family, because you won't want to miss what's next. Special thanks to Homescapes for sponsoring this episode of Seriously Strange. Homescapes is a wildly popular mobile game you've probably heard of. Use my QR code on screen now or the link in the description below to download while I tell you more. In Homescapes, you play the role of Austin, a sassy little butler who returns to his ancestral home, a mansion, you know, where butlers live, to renovate it and return it to its former glory. But there are a lot of mysteries and riddles lingering inside the old dilapidated mansion. By playing fun, addictive puzzles, you can get new and interesting items to replace the old crap that really needs to go. And Homescapes has had a lot of work put into it, with graphics that make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, and a full-blown captivating story with new interesting characters to meet all along the way. You never know what you're gonna dig up next, and who wouldn't want to flip a mansion? I mean, come on, but the money, the money is just, it's so expensive. And yes, I am playing it right now as we speak, okay? Just don't judge me about it, all right? There's always something to do in this game, okay? Always something to do, which is what I love about it. I'm always finding new stuff, digging up new things. Always a new mystery to be solved. I love that kind of stuff. And you should too. I mean, what do we do on my channel here? So join me in playing Homescapes. We all need to just relax and have a bit of fun every now and again. And as rich people say, there's no better fun than fixing up a mansion. You want to be rich, don't you? Better start thinking like a rich person then. Huh. So have some fun and support my channel at the same time by downloading Homescapes using the QR code on screen or the link in the description below. Every person who tries Homescapes out is actively helping my channel. So thanks to all of you who do, and now, on to the episode. There aren't many people out there who don't know of Avril Lavigne. If you were like I was in the early 2000s when she rose to fame, you probably couldn't stand her at that time. I was listening to actual punk rock, so to have some of my peers referring to Avril Lavigne as genuine punk was mildly infuriating. Not gonna pretend that I didn't have a thing for her back then. I did. But her music irritated me to my core. Back in my day, which is a phrase that makes me feel far too old, we had CD players to keep us distracted while on the way to school and during any downtime. We didn't have smartphones to entertain our every whim. So music was everything, even more than it is today. As much as I couldn't stand Avril's rise to fame, however, there came about a conspiracy theory that Avril herself wasn't too thrilled with it either. The conspiracy theory began on a Brazilian blog at least a decade ago and has experienced some peaks and valleys in terms of its popularity since then, with the latest resurgence of the theory happening back in 2017 on Twitter. The conspiracy theory suggests that Avril Lavigne is dead and has been dead since sometime around 2003, between the release of her first album, Let Go, and her second album, Under My Skin. Avril experienced incredible success, signing a contract worth more than $2 million when she was only 16. Her debut studio album brought us such hits as Complicated and Skater Boy, two songs that saw wild popularity, much to my dismay at the time. After the release of such a hit debut album, Avril was understandably launched into the spotlight. 
this was something that Avril wasn't ready for. Before that, she was just another girl from Canada. Canada loves to send America all its very best. Due to the overwhelming attention Avril was getting and how quickly it came into her life, she was understandably shaken up by this. Suddenly, her whole life was in the spotlight. And the spotlight doesn't hug back. And with pressure mounting from her newfound fame, Avril Lavigne tragically took her own life. She was a girl that clearly struggled with a lot of issues behind the scenes, and it turned out that fame was the last thing she truly needed. But Avril was able to pull in a whole lot of money, and this made her label and the executives interested in pocketing as much of that money as possible frustrated. I can only imagine one executive looking to the sky and shouting, why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? Am I right? <laughs> A poetic twist to the short but brilliantly bright life of Avril Lavigne. However, the music industry isn't too keen on losing out on money, and they eventually turn their sights on a singer with an eerily familiar appearance. A singer who looked very much like Avril Lavigne, but wasn't at all famous in her own right. Perhaps with a little work, this new singer, a doppelganger of Avril, could take the deceased star's place on the stage and no one would be the wiser. Enter Melissa Vandella. Now, as it relates to this theory, there are a number of different versions leading to the same general conclusion. It seems the most popular idea is that Melissa Vandella was a girl who looked very similar to Avril to the point where she was used as a body double during certain events, such as events paparazzi would be attending, to stand in for Avril who was struggling with her mental health at that time. The record label knew Avril was a risk, but they couldn't have the money stop flowing. That's why Melissa was truly brought in. She was a look-alike, and with a little work, she could essentially become a clone. It wasn't long before Avril had taken her own life, died in an accident, or had otherwise vanished, and Melissa needed to stand in for Avril full-time. She needed to truly become the new Avril Levine. But no matter the procedure she went through or the studying of Avril's life, there were clues here and there that revealed the new Avril Lavigne was an imposter. A lot of the evidence for this theory doesn't hold much water and is highly speculative, such as the name and cover art for the album Under My Skin, the first album after Avril's assumed death having a title and a look that suggests mourning, with Under My Skin specifically suggesting that perhaps there is a new person under the skin of Avril Lavigne. Believers in this theory also cite the change in Avril's style. While many musicians changed their style over time, it seemed that Avril's style changed much quicker than what is typically seen. The lyrics in the songs after Avril's death are seen as signs themselves, cryptic messages attempting to leave behind hints to Avril's fans that something bad had happened, and that Avril was struggling quite deeply. The song Nobody's Home is referenced to help confirm this theory. Among these things, some have noticed that Avril's features have changed somewhat. From her jawline to the corners of her eyes, certain freckles appeared and disappeared. Some moles vanished while new ones popped up. Her punk style changed dramatically, and suddenly she began wearing dresses to events, something many of Avril's fans couldn't see the true Avril ever doing. One of the more bizarre claims is that Avril Lavigne, prior to her death in 2003, was taller than she was by the time her 2004 album released. Suddenly, somehow, Avril had lost around an inch in height. Her singing voice also has changed rather dramatically, something that isn't common practice for a lot of singers. If she had gotten fame for her style in 2002, why would she make such sweeping changes after only a couple of years in the spotlight? Then fans began to notice that the autographs they'd received from Avril Lavigne before her assumed death were much different after and have remained different since. This also goes for her handwriting prior to death and her handwriting since. 
it's easy to see the differences here. One additional bit of evidence that seems to indicate something bizarre is indeed happening behind the scenes is a photo Avril had taken of her in recent years, where she had her fist raised up slightly in front of herself, and on her hand was written one word, a name. That name was none other than Melissa. Why this was written there, fans have been unable to ascertain. All the same, however, if a real Avril Lavigne was looking to quell the voices of conspiracy theorists, this didn't help in any way whatsoever. For a lot of people, this was essentially all the confirmation they needed. Melissa Vandella, as a name, hadn't arisen until some time after the original Brazilian Avril is dead blog post, during what is seen as perhaps the most popular resurgence of this theory to date. This resurgence in 2017 occurred in a thread of tweets that received hundreds of thousands of likes and retweets, but for whatever reason, the account that listed out the evidence of Avril being replaced was suspended from Twitter not long after, and the tweets connected were lost. Some theorists state that Avril herself insisted on the hiring of a body double to take over for her during public events and that the two became very close friends. Melissa was devastated to discover that Avril was found dead at her home by herself shortly after the passing of her beloved grandfather. It seemed that his death combined with the overwhelming pressure from the fame was what pushed Avril over the edge, and whether she killed herself or simply vanished, she made the decision that her current life at that time wasn't the life for her. I don't think there's any question regarding whether or not there are individuals in the music industry who would do something like replace a dead star if they had a convincing enough replacement and the situation was just right. However, I feel that in this specific case, there are a lot of explanations behind each point of evidence. But if somehow the label happened to pull off the total replacement of one of the biggest stars in North America back in the early 2000s, then who else out there has also been replaced? And before you say it, yes, Paul McCartney, don't worry, I know. But I don't want to sit here and try to disprove this theory. Truthfully, people are going to believe what they want to believe, and that's exactly what I want all of you to do as well. I want you to tell me what you believe in the comments below. Was Avril replaced? Do you think something like this would be possible to pull off? I want to hear what you all have to say. But always remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel with notifications on. It helps me out considerably. Also give Homescapes a shot. You may totally dig it, and just giving it a try helps out my channel a lot as well. Watch the shadows, and stay alive out there. Why do you have to go and make things so complicated? <laughs> Actually, it's a lot less complicated. Yeah. Never mind, that's mean. Very mean to say. Yeah. Okay, uh, camera off. And audio off. <laughs>